Hey guys, it's Jeremy with the Acoustic Shop here with your top five mistakes that most new mandolin players make. So one of the biggest mistakes I see is we've got a lot of tuning pegs up here and a lot of strings. Almost every student I've had has broken a string because they don't know which one they're tuning. And I see this all the time where they will just be turning and turning and turning and going, it, the sound's not changing and it's because they're turning the wrong peg. So the first thing you need to do is trace that string all the way from where you're picking it to where it ends on the headstock and count it. It's a very common mistake, easy to make. You could be just turning on one of these and be playing a completely different string with your right hand. So make sure you're tuning the same string that you are plucking. Another mistake I see mandolin players make is not treating a pair of strings as if they are a pair of strings. When you're first learning this instrument, uh, it's confusing why we have two of each string. We're supposed to play those as if they're one. We want to play both A strings, both E strings on both our down and up strokes. And almost every new player I see is being very precise and very uh, minute with their movements. And so they're only hitting one or the other of each string. Two things that's doing for you. You're not getting the real sound of a mandolin because the mandolin sounds the way it does because you're playing two strings at once. And also you're kind of cutting your chances of a clean note in half. Sometimes I'll only have one of these notes clean, but if I play them together, all you hear is the clean note. So you get two chances at a clean note if you play both strings on both strokes. Another very common mistake is too much tension in both of your hands. Because this is new and foreign to you, it seems like you gotta hold everything really tight and really hard to get a clean note, and that is doing the opposite. If your arm is too tense, and your right arm especially, that's holding that pick is too tense, the pick really gets stuck on the strings. Like if I'm holding it with a lot of tension, the pick just does this sound. Where if I loosen that just a little bit, that pick can really flex in your hand. That loosens up your arm for more speed and doesn't cramp up as much, but it also just makes that pick glide over the strings. A loose grip is gonna make it sound much better. Another common mistake is using too thin or flimsy of a pick. I know on a lot of guitar players, they will choose a very thin pick and it sounds all right because they're doing a lot more strumming, Mandolin with the eight strings doubled up, it really accentuates that plastic sound. And if you have too thin of a pick, all you're hearing is this real tinny, uh, very thin sound to your instrument. Where a thicker pick, I prefer about one millimeter, gives you a much more punchy and strong tone to that mandolin. A mistake that's very common among a lot of people starting on the mandolin is just using the same finger to kind of play up and down the neck. And that makes it a lot more complex than if you assign a finger. And it kind of works out really well on mandolin for the most part, two frets per finger. One and two with your first finger, three and four with your middle finger, five and six with your ring finger, and eventually you'll add that pinky on seven. If you do that, then you're kind of staying in this one position. All the fingers can keep out of each other's way. And rather than playing and moving your whole hand, it can all be in one position. The most uh, important thing to remember as you're learning an instrument, and this goes whether it's the mandolin, guitar, the trumpet, any instrument you're learning is it does have a big learning curve. When you're first starting out, you're gonna have some hurt fingers, you're gonna have some bad notes, it's not gonna come as easy as it might initially seem, but if you really stick with it and learn all the fu fundamentals, once you get over that hill, you start to just learn music and it starts to accelerate and it's almost like a snowball effect where everything you learned before it is now adding to the next song, makes it easier and easier and more enjoyable as you go. But you really have a lot of uh, attention being paid to fundamentals at the beginning which aren't as exciting and fun and rewarding. But if you stick through all that, you're really gonna have a blast with it and when you get to play with other people, that's when the real magic gets to happen. Another common mistake you may find yourself making is seeing other people play something and thinking, my hands won't do that. And on mandolin, we have some pretty big stretches with a lot of tension on those. That G chord, the kind of bluegrass style G chord is a big stretch, with that pinky way out there. I know students, when they see me do this, say, my hand won't do that, my hands just don't reach that. And I show them, it's easy for this left hand that's been doing it for 30 some years, 
If I switch and try to do that with my right hand, which is my dominant hand but has never made these chord shapes, I can't do it either. So you're having to build muscles in your hand that aren't there uh, naturally. You have to train your hand to do that. And one quick tip I have for that is rather than start down here where all those frets are at their widest, go way up the neck up here and you can be all the way up to the 10th fret there. Same spacing, but now all of a sudden the, finger, the frets are closer together and you can start to train these fingers to hold those big wide positions and eventually your hand will be able to do this as well. And still, I think the number one mistake people make is giving up too soon. A lot of times you're just on the verge of everything clicking and falling into place and you realize the time and effort into it is more than you might have expected, but stick with it. There's so much enjoyment on the other end of that hill. If you keep working at it, you're gonna start making music, being able to play with other people and it just becomes very enjoyable. Just stick with it. Hey, we really appreciate you guys watching that video. It was my favorite it's one we've made so far. We've, we've done hundreds of videos and that was the best one. It was. And the next one's gonna be even better. If you'd like to see that, <laughs> be sure you subscribe to this channel. And also, the more you comment and inter interact below, the more the YouTube algorithms pick it up and start pushing it out to other people, like-minded people. Algorithms? Algorithms, they're everywhere. They permeate the internet and YouTube's got one. And it watches our videos and it sees how much you comment and then it pushes us to other people like you. And we want everyone to experience the acoustic shop world where we talk about instruments, we do reviews, we've got some fun videos coming up. We thank you guys so much for being a part of it and we'll see you in the next video.